This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. And this is the show where we talk with people in and around professional wrestling. And we are back, if, you, if you're on the stream and, and such. Uh, we have not done a show for a while. I've been traveling a little bit, but also visiting a lot of indie wrestling. And uh, I don't know, we've, we've been talking about a little bit over on Wrestling Mayhem Show and the uh, uh, Monday Mayhem wrap-up and uh, things like that. It's been uh, Just look at my feed on Facebook and uh, Twitter. Uh, it's been, been seeing, uh, I think we, we counted that I've uh, witnessed wrestling in seven states since the beginning of the year. And uh, it's been quite a ride. But we do have our first guest, and we have many lined up here, just, just this week recording, uh, as, as we are recording tonight. And uh, uh, excited to bring you guys some new faces to the show. But first, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, IndieWrestling.us. Check out the past uh, episodes of the Indie Mayhem Show. We got a lot of people uh, uh, hanging out over there, and uh, a lot of people have talked to over the years. I don't even know what we stopped putting numbers on the episodes, so we've been doing a while. <laughs> so after 100, we just gave up on numbers. Um, but uh, go check all the, those past episodes up, and I'm sure there might be somebody you might be a fan of that you've never heard their interview. Also, drop us a line at goodtimes at wrestlingmamshow.com at 412 206 WMS0. If you have any questions for any announced guests or if uh, you have anybody you would like to recommend for us to have on the show here, please hit us up on there. Uh, and you can also join us. Keep an eye out on the indywrestling.us and Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page pages uh, so you can uh, find out when we are going to go live with an interview like we are this evening on the IndieWrestling.us Facebook and a few other platforms as well if you're joining over there. And thank you everybody for joining us in the chat and already asking some questions for the Brohemus. So we'll get to those here in a minute. But Ooh. hey, as I mentioned, our guest week this week is the Brohemus. What up, what up, what up? Glad you're, to be here. You're probably the one that's been on our network <laughs> like widely in the studio doing stuff with us so many times yet has never been on an actual mayhem show podcast wrestler wise hey but i get to hang out here yeah, <laughs> that's right because we, we've been doing um we've been doing these live streams these uh twitch live streams the the brohemoth invitationals. invitationals we gotta bring that back soon we do well the, the schedule is finally opening up i only got one more trip and, and so we're gonna have to find some spots for that oh, uh definitely. but you've been in here you've been bringing you know some of your friends in wrestling i've been which i've gotten to know some some people that we, i haven't because of that uh, which you know, hopefully you can bring him in, them in the show uh, uh, sooner or later. Some of them are kind of younger trainees, so we got to give them a minute, oh, right? Yeah. Zeke Mercer beat you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but I beat Zeke Mercer, so who won it, really? Yeah, I whooped his ass at Injustice. <laughs> Call me out. Um, but anyways, bro, Hemoth, how you doing? Oh, I'm great. Glad to be here. Uh, I know you love coming here and checking out the tacos and everything. Oh, so, of course. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to Los Palmas. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, first, a little break the ice question. I usually ask here if I remember all my questions. Again, it's been so long. Um, what is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Earliest memory? I can honestly say uh, when Mankind won the title because Nitro spilled the Drop the spoiler that Mankai was going with the title, so me and my brother changed the channel to watch it. <laughs> that was the big moment. Yep. I like. I don't know. I've been stuck in with WWE. Like, like I, I just recently found. I didn't find indie wrestling until like 2010. So mm. like, it was mainly WWE, WCW, like anything I could find on TV, I would watch it. Yeah, we were talking about you. You kind of discovered uh, indie wrestling around 2010 as well. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 was it, you know, was it the, you know, the the mankinds of the of the promotion that kind of got your attention? Like I just want like I got sick of like me and my brother got sick of them dropping spoilers instead of just focusing on the show. So my brother was like, you know what, I'm sick of watching this. And he changed the channel. So yeah. like I just I couldn't argue with him, so I just watched it with him. And you changed the channel and never went back. Never went back. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's kind of that sounds like pretty much what happened that night for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh <laughs> so uh uh so how did you you know over the years watching wrestling how did you go from that to saying that you wanted to be in the ring or was this a, a, 
a long time. Like, it, I'm going to get there. Yeah, it was, like, literally since I started watching it, it was like, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. And, like, I really didn't realize it until we did the uh, Battle of the Borough with KSWA that people were like, I remember you being in high school talking about you wanted to do professional wrestling. Now you're, like, actually doing it. I was like, I really haven't talked about this that long. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the thing that you've kind of done on the slide and not really thought about it, right? Right. You're just uh, like, this is an inevitability. Yeah, it's like, it's going to happen. Like, mm-hmm. if, I, I want it, so it's going to happen. But. So tell me a little bit about, you know, you said you discovered indie wrestling in 2010. You know, when? how did you kind of discover, like, how to get into it? Or was was that why you started watching indie wrestling? Or it was just, no, that like, was the next thing? Like, one of the managers when I worked at Burger King up there was like, oh, yeah, they do wrestling around here. And, like, I went to a show and just literally started badgering people until somebody was like, okay, we're trading. You show up here. Mm-hmm. And one thing led to another, and now I'm doing it. um how was that training for you was it surprising getting into it it hurt it hurt it it hurt like it hurt a lot like it just hurt pain is like the greatest (laughs) like it was fun like glad i did it but it it hurt so much (laughs) tell me about were you brohemoth uh out of the gate after you got through training Uh, i've been brohemoth since since it started like Mm -hmm. it's just been a nickname i've always kind of just ran with and Mm -hmm. then Lo and behold, people start calling me, and it's just stuck ever since. Because I know a lot of people, I, I've known people that have gone in with, like, this is going to be my character. I already have this idea, right? Yeah. And then, like, training, that kind of gets kind of like, no, actually, you should do something different. Was, was there was there a flag kind of bringing one in like that, or? Literally, the part that was, like, hard for me to really discover was the character, but, like, the name was there. Like, okay. Like, the attitude was there, but, like, developing it, and, like, because my trainer was just like, it's got to be something you relate to, or you won't make it believable. Right. Right. And my thing has always been I, I play video games. Um so so how did how did that develop then? You know, because you know, you're it, it, it sticks out. I forget what show I saw you at first. I see this guy come out and he's got a video game controller on his tights and I'm just like, Okay, this is this is something different. This is interesting. Uh the original singlet was designed by my trainer. So <laughs> yeah. I just kinda <laughs> like literally like the basis of the character he kinda just Threw a controller on everything. It was like, here, this is you. And mm-hmm. it's like, I'll make it work. <laughs> okay. So how, how did that kind of develop and grow? I wound up getting sponsored. My sponsor was like, I don't like your look. So we're just going to upgrade everything <laughs> you have. <laughs> so that's literally how the look went from being the black and green to the new black and green with the stars. Mm-hmm. was like, they were like, you need an upgrade. <laughs> okay. Okay. But, but tell me about like the... The character itself, not just the look. Like, how what what is a what is the Brohemoth? Brohemoth is uh, it's literally just me cranked up to a thousand. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just the regular attitude is just it's now even more in your face than normal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and and you know this is like you know you're you're wearing um like like controllers on chains and things like that. So it's like it, it, it's like you're you're you know this 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 monster, but there's video game elements through it, which is really interesting when you're, you know, your different versions of your personas I see across, like, you know, Black Diamond and and uh, Fight Society and stuff. Like, literally, the character has always been kind of like, I am a monster. It's mm-hmm. just depending on, like, am I Godzilla or am I more going for, like, the bad guy? Like, mm-hmm. depending on what side of the coin. They, like, you either get Godzilla or you get Bowser. Like, that's how I've always played the coin of the Brohemoth. Is like, this character is larger than life mm-hmm. like they're, they're, like he's he's going to keep going until it's game over awesome so tell me a little bit about of course you're you're with fight society we uh you know we you know we've been seeing you doing a lot there um what are what are some of the highlights that you guys have you, you've been doing so far in your career uh i would probably say uh winning that that guinness world record battle royal was definitely the first one <laughs> oh yeah like i literally showed up was like oh there, there's no way i'm winning this thing and then yeah. like they called they call the number and then the guy here look real looks at the list and goes oh no not this guy and it's like brohemoth and then jack massacre tapped me and was like congratulations i'm like for what he's like you, you're winning the battle royal i was like no i'm not <laughs> he's like he just called like i was like that was my number they were like yeah and like i'm like oh god i gotta win this thing <laughs> Which is this? So this was a hundred and nine person battle royal, uh, an attempt at the Guinness World Record, 
whether it is or is not, I think is still up in the air. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so I mean, they're not, they're not quick with this stuff. I got a trophy. I don't care. <laughs> you got a trophy. I we did see the trophy here in the studio because Ronnie Starks had it and he was serving beers out of it on the Mayhem show. I didn't get a beer, so Ronnie, uh, no. we got a problem. <laughs> so, um, so it was probably a daunting. So this was three rings, one hundred and nine people. In a very hot building to begin with oh, in God, so August, hot. September, it was, yeah, it was September. August. No, it was September. I, I think, think. Yeah, I think it was like early September. It was still warm. It was still yeah. very, very warm. Oh yeah, it was very hot that day. Um, how intimidating was that to get through? To have to last because I know a lot of people just bugged out right away on that thing. I I was like I gotta I got I was like my whole thing was like I just gotta figure out a way to survive this whole thing because I'm supposed to be the last man standing. So mm-hmm. let's do this. So literally, I would like throw three people out, lay in the corner for like 10 minutes, throw out three more people, maybe walk around for five minutes and get punched. Like, I was just like, try and survive. Like, that's the whole game plan. <laughs> just survive. It was just, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. Um, yeah. And, and that, if you guys want to see, that is actually, if you, if you look up, I think, Guinness World Record Battle Royal, it's over. I think we put it over on IndieWrestling.us uh, awesome. uh, YouTube page. And you can see, we just put five cameras up and have fun. <laughs> so um uh from that uh oh i had my other question lined up here i we actually do have some questions from the chat room uh, a lot of people give me a shout outs there again you know we talked about our friend um alex over there in uh in in uh california uh he he of course is a big chikara follower and says oh we need to get brohemoth to do a uh, uh and a couple others uh in for a king of trios King of Trios. I'm sorry, I don't like Shakara's King of Trios. I don't like. You I don't, don't know, know how King to watch Shakara, so I don't like. What? I haven't figured. Like, I didn't. I don't really do much like watching other than like maybe once or twice. I'll catch oh, the uh, to... the Botchamania guy. His there compilation. Was, this, this you need to get into Shakara guy. Dude, they had their own video game when they were here last time. Really? They had a tag team called Super Smash Brothers. I've heard of them. They're now the Dark Order on AEW. Right, right, yeah. right, right. I think they are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, uh, player Uno, he was working Smash in Canada and broke one of their Titantron screens with Joey Ryan's lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. So, so you are aware of them, but no, no, that's that's usually where a lot of those guys come from. And uh, I think a Brohemoth would do very, very well out there. I mean, I'm always up for a new challenge. Absolutely. I mean, you'd have to, re- you'd be able to wrestle uh, ants and uh, a hermit crab. And uh, uh, hermit crab you see the crab, f- yeah, hermit yeah. crab's and, legit, and Ophidian. Uh, so a little preview of that. Um, bro, I actually, actually this question is out here, but I think, I think you did this once. Chris is asking, bro, when you're, when are you making your debut in RWA? You did wrestle there once. I wrestled RWA. I yeah. wrestled, uh, Money Mike. Mon- Movie maker Money Mike. Yeah, there was a lot. Cause that was, uh, that was the, uh, the circle versus new circle main event show. Yeah. There was a lot of, a lot of new faces on that show. I've never seen Movie Mike again. <laughs> it's unfortunate. I liked it. I follow him. Like, it's some good stuff. It was a fun match. Yeah. So, uh, tell me what is the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling for you so far? For me, the best thing about indie wrestling is like shows like Stop All Cancer, the shows that really like mix up the normal landscape. Mm-hmm. Like, I love like seeing guys that like normally wouldn't be in the same locker room as me, either sharing the ring with them or being in the locker room with them. Mm hmm. To like pick like pick their brains or learn something new. Uh, the worst thing I would say is sometimes that separation from the different companies, because mm-hmm. like you got guys in different places who they they are they they feel a different way because they're coming from a different company. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you have the, the the typical ego battle that people claim is really common in wrestling. Um. You have a kind of a special situation too. I don't see this too often, but you actually have a sponsor. Yeah. In wrestling. Uh that uh, Yeah, shout out to the Lower Valley Athletic Foundation cuz they do so much for me. Tell me a little bit about that. Like how how does how does a wrestler become sponsored? Uh cuz I, I again, not many are doing that and I think some people should think about this. I know I, I knew a bunch of guys that were doing the collar and elbow. Mhm. Which like I like I'm I'm someone who's like if it's popular nine times out of ten I don't touch it right like right. when everybody's loving The Walking Dead I'm like no like <laughs> so like I didn't really like particularly want to go down that path mm-hmm. 
And then uh, the Lower Valley Athletic Foundation, uh, they're they're like the like the board member, like the company, like the people who run it are like good friends of mine. And they were like, they came they came to me and offered. They were like, well, we see we see some talent and we want to help you in any way, shape, or form. So they started helping me out. They they helped me. They gave me a new, upgraded my look, my 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 merch. Like they've just been a big help for me in and out of the ring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like they like I I, I chose to join them because. I really like their plan. They want to, they want to give sports back because, like, so many schools you hear they're cutting out sports mm-hmm. and physical stuff, and they're like, "We just want to help." Like, I, I, I really dig that. So that's why, I like, I chose to get on board with them. So they they and and they're doing like video game tournaments and everything, which yep. you know obviously you know fits into what you're doing, yeah. you know, theme thematically and everything too. So I know I've seen them around wrestling a lot. It seems yeah. these days, and and I, I know that crew always has a lot of really good ideas over there. Oh, so great. like literally every about like a good ninety percent of the new stuff you see me in, mm-hmm. their creations. Do you have any tips? You know, obviously, you know this, this is one that kind of, um, you know, kind of fit for you. But if, if for somebody that's kind of uh, dealing, you know, looking to and dealing with like kind of a wrestler sponsorship, do you have any kind of tips for somebody that's looking for something like that? Uh, my 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 tip would be um, make yourself marketable like you Mm -hmm. like you got to give them a reason to want to take a gamble on you like you got to be able like don't be afraid to go above and beyond if it's going to help like you got to put in the extra work because i cannot be thankful enough for the lower valley athletic foundation to be honest like they've done a lot for me and it seems it seems the vibe too because um like you definitely uh 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 Stick out for the kids uh, on on a show. <laughs> Kid, I think it's just because of the video game thing. Because so mm-hmm. many kids are like, like they see the controller. It's like Nintendo. Okay, we 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 know we can get back. I can identify with that one, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like I, I, I when I posted this, I, there was a comment that said, "Oh, that's my son's favorite wrestler." <laughs> like I'm like, I really don't like. My thing is, I'm just trying to entertain. Like, mm-hmm. if you like, if I literally like, I don't care how the match is, like, what it is, like, what the end result is. As mm-hmm. long as I hear good match when I'm done, mm-hmm. I'm happy with how it turned out. Because yeah. like that, that I just want to entertain. That's my whole goal with it. Like, I just want to make sure anybody who bought a ticket is like, yeah, that was fun. I want to come back. Uh, so tell me about where. Where can people see you these days? You're, you're, you're frequenting a, a few different promotions. Uh, you can find me at the Diamond Plex in Benwood, West Virginia. Uh, you can find me at the Battlegrounds in McKeesport. That's for Fight Society. Yep. Uh, you can find me at Spirit Hall with KSWA in Lawrenceville. Uh, I think mainly that's where I'm bobbing around right now. Uh, oh, you can also catch me at Uprise. Yeah, debuting this month, correct? That's awesome. Looking forward to that. If it was Uprise is the uh, kind of, uh, uh, I, I guess, an NXT for for Rise Wrestling with a Y. The the, the up and coming spot. Yeah, the up them. and coming kind of the opportunity tryout. I'm, yeah. I'm always up for a challenge, so I don't got no problem working my way up. Absolutely. So I look forward to this. There's some good talent that's been coming through there. You usually don't see in the area or or different. Again, another opportunity for different talent that usually doesn't love, mix it up yeah, with each love other. Those, love those spots where it's like, hey, we know you're over here, but like. We want to see you do this. Um, of course, uh, uh, Black Diamond, you're hanging out with your friend uh, uh, Nathan Aldridge. Uh, oh, yeah. Shout out to no good Nathan <laughs> Aldridge, Black Diamond Wrestling Heavyweight Champion still. See, I, I, I kind of want to do an interview with him, but I'm kind of worried about it because I know how he is with a live mic. He's a professional <laughs> at all times. At all times. At all times. He, he is told a professional. A kid, he told a kid he was giving him eye cancer. The kid probably had it coming. Well, okay. Okay. <laughs> Jacob's out there, and he's asking, how do you like Fight Society? Love it. Yeah, everywhere. Love it. Like, Fight Society is so different from everywhere else. So it's like, like, like from the, the rules, the whole, the look of it, it's, it's 
different. So I just enjoy being there. It's got a really good vibe, um, you know. And sometimes you get thrown into the bathroom. I think that was you uh, Yeah, that was uh, probably during the match that I just posted uh, oh, <laughs> here on the, on the visuals here. Uh, but there are definitely some clips of uh, that. <laughs> This match hurt. <laughs> this was this was uh, you with uh, Patrick Patrick Hayes and Beastman. Uh, let's see. This was the oh, this was the end of the championship gauntlet when they had to vacate a title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a fun one. Uh, so go check those out. There's a few clips of that over on the uh, uh, IndieWrestling.us YouTube and Facebook page, uh, and and the uh, Fight Society pages as well. So um, all right, bro, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Brohemoth, TFB. And you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Bronomaly. There you go. Go check it out. Check out the Brohemoth. Follow them. And, of course, we will definitely be doing another Brohemoth Invitational very, very soon here uh, from the studio. Oh, yeah, because me and Jordan got unfinished business. That's right. Oh, another idea. Bill and Bro's Epic Adventure. Bill and Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, Billy Ruxman, who we who took over the show one time. Oh yes, I've forgiven him for that, so we can do this adventure. <laughs> Let's make that happen. Um, awesome! Thank you, Bro Hema, for joining us here on the Indie Mayhem Always show. Always glad to be here. And uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, please subscribe to the Indie Mayhem show on your uh, podcatcher, or make sure you're liking the Facebook pages for Wrestling Mayhem Show Indie Wrestling US, so you see when the next one is coming up here. Until next time, please support Indie Wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.